It might be hard to believe now, but there was a time when movie stars were practically venerated as fucking gods amongst men, when people genuinely looked up to and respected them as the living embodiments of the American dream. Glamorous, refined and larger than life, but kind of remote and untouchable, like they existed in some other world that was separate from our own. Something inspirational for the common man to aspire to, but never quite to reach. Now they've become kind of a sad, dated, unfunny joke without a punchline, fuel for a thousand memes on the internet, mocked and belittled for their clumsy attempts to preach and pander and curry favour with the very people they look down on with such contempt, their flaws and shortcomings and insecurities increasingly exposed for the world to see. Whether it's fucking clowns like Seth Rogen pretending to be articulate, well-informed political activists and losing his mind anytime someone points out how ludicrous and out of touch he is, or Madonna sitting in her bath of milk and rose petals trying to explain how she's no different from a minimum wage factory worker who has to make the daily choice between heating their home or having food to eat, or Ron Perlman ranting and raving into his phone about some political bill that he clearly has no knowledge or understanding of, or Gal Gadot leading a bunch of idiots in an off-key rendition of Imagine at a time when most people were questioning whether they'd even have a home to live in next month, or J.K. Rowling somehow managing to alienate basically everyone by going to war with the very people she spent years pandering to, or Will Smith losing his mind because he can't take a fucking joke. I could probably go on for days about this, reeling off examples of celebrities embarrassing themselves in front of millions of people, and that's not even counting the really dark and sinister stuff lurking out there. But the point is, the whole cult of celebrity that used to be such a big, powerful part of our culture really feels like it's dying on its arse these days. And to be honest, it was kind of inevitable that this was going to happen sooner or later. The world we live in is changing, and so is the way we see the rich and famous. But if I had to describe the instrument of their downfall in two ways, words, they would have to be social media. See, back in the 90s and even the 2000s, celebrities were a lot less accessible than they are today, and generally the only time you heard from them was in carefully scripted interviews with magazines, friendly journalists and talk show appearances where they were contractually protected from difficult or uncomfortable questions. I mean, don't get me wrong, there was still plenty of potential for fuck-ups, like Sean Connery giving his decidedly old-school opinions on violence against women. As I remember you said you don't do it with a clenched fist, it's better to do it with an open hand. Mm. Yeah, remember that? Yeah. Yeah. And I didn't I, love that. I haven't changed my opinion. Uh, you haven't? No. Or Marlon Brando refusing his Oscar to make a statement about how Native Americans are treated in the industry. Just as a little side note, Roger Moore walked home with a fucking Oscar that night because no one else would take it. <laughs> Or Oliver Reed showing up to talk shows pissed out of his fucking mind. <laughs> Why do you drink? <laughs> because the finest people that I've ever met in my life are in pubs. Never change, Ollie. Never change. But these things were generally outliers, rather than part of the broader culture in Hollywood, and for the most part they were usually criticised as crass or inappropriate. Generally speaking, most celebrities sober enough to know what year it was were able to stick to the script, answering puffball questions about their careers, promoting whatever films they were in, and mostly steering clear of anything particularly political or controversial. And on the rare occasions when they did get involved in shit like that, you knew they meant business because it could have serious repercussions for their careers. Nowadays it's practically the opposite, you're more likely to get criticised for not being political. Anyway, the point is, there was a kind of protective wall between them and the public, so that you never really knew the inner workings of their minds. Thank fuck. You had no clue what they got up to on a daily basis, or the mundane stuff that went on behind closed doors. You didn't know what their opinions were on current political and social events, and you generally didn't see them go off script. But then an innocuous little app like Twitter came along, and suddenly they had the ability to interact directly with their fans from the comfort of their own homes. They could put out unscripted, unrehearsed, unfiltered opinions, and enjoy that sweet dopamine hit as thousands of likes and retweets came pouring in. Holy shit, they thought to themselves as they sipped their soy latte. I can just sit here on my phone and bask in the glow of my own fame, while my legions of fans shower my every word with praise and adoration. No more boring press junkets, scripted interviews and tedious questions for me. Now I can talk about whatever the fuck I want. 
Unlike a moth to a flame, the allure of instant gratification, constant attention, and on-demand ego stroking was just too strong for most of them to resist. And before you knew it, these people were given their opinions on fucking everything from social issues to foreign policy to the economy in a never-ending quest to hog the public's attention and bag themselves more hollow praise. They were sharing pictures of their homes, their meals, their fucking dogs. They were posing without stylists and makeup in an effort to look relatable. Lovely stuff indeed. The only problem is that, well, most of these people are complete fucking idiots. They're hollow, narcissistic, poorly educated, privileged, disconnected, impulsive, weak-minded, ignorant, and completely unqualified to give their opinions on most of the things they speak so loudly about. They've made their careers out of saying words written by other people. They've spent years surrounded by well-paid yes-men that never challenge their opinions or call them out on their bullshit. So because of that, most of them have never had to be particularly smart or well-informed. People just kind of go along with what they say. And it's created the false impression that what they say must in fact be correct. They've been safely protected within the Hollywood echo chain so that when they decide to share their opinions with the rest of the world, it never really crosses their minds that they might be completely fucking stupid. I mean, don't get me wrong, people say stupid shit on the internet every minute of every day. The difference though is that the average person doesn't have a public persona to protect. The average person doesn't have millions of people who pay attention to what they say, and a news media hungry for scandal keeping tabs on their every move. Truly, familiarity breeds contempt, and the more we see of these people, the less we fucking like them. The more we've pulled back the curtain on the world of celebrity, the more we've come to realise that there isn't anything particularly smart, interesting, or special behind it. The mystique has vanished, and with it, the misplaced belief in the power of fame. The age of the internet has also given birth to a new breed of celebrities who don't need to be part of the Hollywood machine, or have an army of publicists, stylists, and advisors to reach their audience. All they really need is a webcam and an internet connection because, funnily enough, people respond better to unpolished passion than slick, soulless corporate pandering. Just ask G4 TV. <laughs> I mean shit man, if some drunken asshole from Scotland can find a bit of success online then basically anyone can do it. And I guess that's kind of my point here. The fact that almost anyone can find a degree of fame and success now has kind of diluted the talent pool and made traditional celebrities a bit less special. And I guess the natural result of that is that they start to feel threatened. And their clumsy attempts to appeal to that same desire for authenticity only exposes how fake and shallow they really are. Now, it would be unfair of me to say that every celebrity is like this, because clearly there's still good people out there that have managed to stay humble, grounded, and grateful for what they have, and resist the darker impulses of ego and attention seeking. There are artists who do what they do because they genuinely care about their craft, and have no real interest in the public attention that comes with it. Some of them have even been able to use their fame and wealth to support good causes, or raise awareness about important issues, in which case, good on them. But I think most of the time, it's pretty easy to tell the difference between an actor who quietly donates his salary to a charitable cause without expecting anything in return and a fame-hungry loudmouth spouting hollow political talking points on social media because they think that's what people want to hear. People have got an eye for fakery now and they don't fucking like it. The end result of all these different factors is that we're kind of transitioning into a post-celebrity world where being famous just isn't that special or unique anymore, where normal everyday people can have their ideas go viral overnight with a single well written and tweet, and where being a big deal in Hollywood doesn't make you a big deal to the average person anymore. Now don't get me wrong, there's always going to be a place for actors, entertainers, and performers of all kinds, and there's nothing wrong with being fans of their work, but I guess my point here is that their work is what should matter, not all the stupid shit that's been tacked onto it. Fundamentally, they're entertainers, not pundits, philosophers, leaders, or thinkers. Their job is to amuse and distract us, not to lecture, berate, and guilt us into thinking like they do. In fact, fuck what I've got to say, Kurt Russell expressed it better than I ever could, so I'll leave you with his wise words instead. There's no reason entertainers can't learn just as much as anybody else about a subject, whatever it is. But I think what's sad about it is that they lose their status as a court jester. And I'm a court jester. That's what I was born to do. And you know what, Kurt? You're really fucking good at it. It's a shame more people weren't like you. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. Go away now.